everybody, I'm Christina. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, let's talk about books. Today, I'm going to give you my June wrap-up. So, in June, I reread one book, I read four books, and I read one graphic novel. The first book I read was the reread, and that was P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han. I think when I read these books the first time, I had much more fun reading them. And I felt more for these characters than this second time that I'm reading them. I don't know why. That doesn't mean that I didn't like the book or that I didn't enjoy it. It just means that I had this idea of the books in my head, like I remember the experience being different than what I experienced this past month rereading them. But P.S. I Still Love You is just adorable. This is my favorite book of the trilogy. Peter is my favorite character in this story. I do love Lara Jean and her family, I love Kitty, but I don't know, I've been Team Peter since the very beginning and to see his arc, it's been fantastic. And to see him go from, um, hi Lara Jean, oh we're fake dating, to I'm doing everything for this girl because I love her, it's just so cute. So I loved seeing Peter jealous and seeing him caring about Lara Jean, taking the relationship seriously. And in this book, he's more integrated into the Song family. That is great. What I loved about this book is that it's the second book in the series and we get to see the relationship of the characters because usually in the first book, we see how they get into a relationship and they start dating at the end of the book. And, and usually in the second book, they break up and it's them getting back together. And that is just so frustrating because what I want to see is their relationship. I want to see the after, happily ever after. And that's what we got with this book. Another thing that I really liked was to see this group of friends reunited, even though the chemistry is completely different and the interactions are completely different. In the first book and in the second book, Lara Jean mentions a lot that she was part of this group with Peter and John Ambrose McLaren and Genevieve and Chris and that they were this tight group when they were little and that something happened and everyone went their different ways. So in this book they get together again and even though it's a little bit awkward, it was still fun to see them and it's really interesting to see the group now and how it varies or how it's different from Lara Jean's memories of this group when they were little. Then, of course, I read Always and Forever Lara Jean. I mean, I reread the books just to get to this beautiful book. My only problem with Always and Forever Lara Jean is that it's so sad. I just didn't like how this book made me feel. The other books made me feel happy and just cozy and just like, oh, all the feels. In this one, I was just like, my babies, no, 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 stop it, no, don't do that. <sighs> so this is the third book in the series, and I don't want to spoil you, so if you haven't read the other books, please just mute this video until the cover of the book is away, because I'm going to talk a little bit of spoilers here. So if you haven't read the other two books, please just forward this video or mute it. I really like that this book explore a long-term relationship, because usually in contemporary books we get new relationships or re people that are gonna get into a relationship but here we have this couple that has been together for more than a year and that face real life problems if i loved peter before here i just gave him my heart and i was just like take care of it it's yours <laughs> he was the perfect boyfriend that sometimes it was like this is too good to be true something horrible is gonna happen on the other hand i love seeing lara jean standing up for herself, going for what she wanted, and finally doing something for herself and not everybody else. That was so powerful. It's like what Stormy said, something along the lines of don't say no if you really want to say yes. Also, to my surprise, I couldn't stand Margo in this book because she was so annoying. I know she missed her mom, but, but still, I was just like, Margo, stop it. You don't live here anymore. Everyone else is happy, don't ruin it for everyone. And my other favorite thing of this book was the relationship between Kitty and Lara Jean because they have come this close and 
it's just so beautiful to see it and to see how it got to this point. So after reading this book, I was all for contemporary romance. I was like, oh, give me more, give me more of this. But since I already got high school romance, I wanted an adult story. So I picked up All I Ask by Nicole McLaughlin. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. This story wasn't very memorable. In fact, it was kind of predictable and in some times I was like, yeah, right, that happened. But it was hilarious and sweet and that's what I was looking for. What I mean with this story wasn't that memorable is that I don't remember most of the things that happened in the story. I mean, I remember where the story goes, but I don't remember the details and I don't remember the characters besides the two main characters. So this is the story of the stuff I don't know if, how to say this stuff, Sergeant Riv Miller and Emily Phillips. He has his own landscaping business and Emily is a workaholic, a millionaire and she owns a lot of businesses. But since she's a workaholic, she she doesn't have time for anything and she doesn't want a relationship but she makes time to attend her best friend's bachelorette party and here she meets Reeves and they have a one night stand and she makes it clear this is not gonna happen again this is gonna be a one night stand I'm not looking for anything else and he's like well well we'll talk about that later so since she thinks that this is a one night stand she never tells him that she's a millionaire and that she's the CEO of this huge company but as with any rom-com they meet up again, he ends up working for her company, and she doesn't want him to know that she hired him. If you're looking for a rom-com or ch some chick lit or a contemporary romance, this might be the book for you. I give it four stars, and not because this book is perfect, because it has a lot of flaws, but because I really enjoyed reading this. So I think it deserves four stars just because of that. After that, I picked a Sophie Kinsella book, and that book is I've Got Your Number. So this is the story about Poppy Wyatt and Sam Roxton. Poppy is engaged to this guy, Magnus, and she feels his family hates her because they are scholars, they are doctors, and she is a physical therapist. So at the beginning of the book, she's in this hotel celebrating her bachelorette party, and she loses her engagement ring. And this ring has been in Magnus' family for generations so it's very important for her to find this ring and she doesn't want Magnus to know that she lost it so a lot of things happen in the first chapter she loses the ring and she finds this cell phone out of nowhere like in a trash can or something and she's like well it's mine because she needs a phone number for the hotel to contact her if they find a ring but this cell phone belongs to Sam Roxton and he's like, no, give me my phone back, I need it for my job. And she's like, no, it's mine, I can't, I can't give it to you because I need it, because the hotel is gonna call me. And they end up sharing this cell phone. One of the best things about this book is that the author shows us the emails and the texts between Sam and Poppy. And I love when authors do that. And this book was super funny and I was enjoying it until this point in the book when something happens. If you have read this book, you probably know what I'm talking about, but, but Poppy does something to Sam with good intentions, but she's like messing everything up and I'm like, oh, oh, no, stop it. Oh my God, this girl is so stupid. I can't believe she's doing this. What the, f oh. <sighs> I was feeling so much secondhand embarrassment that I was just like, I can't deal with this anymore. Just make it stop. Make it stop. Oh. But I loved the ending. The ending was like a movie. It was so cute and my heart couldn't handle it. That's what saved the book for me. Still, this book is three stars in my opinion. Then I read a graphic novel. I read this graphic novel. It's called Memoria Zeidun La Resistencia. Sadly, it's only in Spanish. This is based in a book that I have mentioned before called Memoria Zeidun. And I don't understand why this hasn't been translated into English yet. I mean, I read this, well, not this one, but the actual book like 10 years ago. And it has been translated to a lot of languages except English. I don't know why. Maybe because you have a lot of fantasy books already, but I just wish you could experience this 
story and these characters. I want all the graphic novels. It's really hard for me to get this here in Ecuador. So when I travel to Spain someday, I will buy all of them. But for me, it was fantastic to revisit this place, this story, these characters and to see them, to actually see them here, because I only imagined them. There were so many things that I didn't remember about this book, and to read them I was like, oh yeah, that happened! Oh my god, I forgot about that! Just look at this. They have dragons? Oh my god. So I had a lot of fun reading this. And this, let me introduce you to Kirtesh. Kirtesh is one of my favorite fictional characters of all time. I just absolutely love him. And finally, I read Gemina. I actually body read this with Jill over at Midnight Reads. I'm gonna leave her link down below in the description. I actually listened to the audiobook because I listened to the audiobook of Illuminae, but when I read Illuminae, I listened to the audiobook and I had the book to check out the pages. This time I didn't have the book, so I couldn't see the format of each page, and that's something that I really want to see someday when I finally buy the book, but the audiobook was so on point. The performance of this book is like 8, 7 stars out of 5. It's so perfect. And there is this song that plays over and over and over again in the book, but here you can actually listen to the song and it's like, oh, it's so annoying. Please listen to the audiobook. Just, just go ahead and listen to the audiobook because it's such an experience. This book for me was a 4.75, but it's not a 5 because there were some characters that I really didn't care about. That's the only reason actually, because this book is intense. It's fast. It's hilarious. It's addictive. If Illuminate was a roller coaster, I don't know how to describe this one because this one, from the very beginning, things happen and then it doesn't stop. You don't have a moment to breathe. It's like a marathon, but like you've been running for seven days. Now I'm gonna mention some spoilers here, so mute this video if you haven't read Gemina until this image is gone. So I loved that they introduced the multiverse. Actually, the authors hinted so many times that they were gonna use the multiverse or parallel universes that I was like, if they don't, I'm gonna be super pissed. Like, I didn't know how they were gonna do it. I didn't know, I didn't know when they were gonna do it, but I knew it had to be there. And I, I just knew that if they didn't do that, I was going to be very angry. But they did! And how it worked out was fantastic. I can't believe everybody died and didn't die in this book. Like, I remember in Illuminae when they told us that Ezra died, I was like, no, no, he didn't die because there's no body. Here we had a body. I was like, oh. This can't be real. It's like the middle of the book and he's already dead and then this other character died and then this other character died and in the end everyone died and then they didn't die. It's just... what? I knew that Jackson was a traitor. I just didn't like him. I couldn't get any good vibes from him. I was like, mm, hmm, I don't trust you. So when he was a traitor I was just like, I knew it. You mother... I think I do like Illuminate better than this one because I was more invested in the characters. But that doesn't mean that I didn't like the characters in this book. In fact, I loved the, in the interactions between Hannah and Nick. They made me laugh so much. <laughs> I started three other books this month, but I didn't finish them. So that's why they're not in this wrap-up. But I started reading Nevernight. I started reading Six of Crows. And I started reading the... Oh my god! The Skin Collector. And I didn't pick a TBR jar challenge for this month. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick it here right now. And then I'm going to complete it in July. So here it is. So my challenge for June, but I'm gonna actually complete it in July. Oh! Oh! Well, I actually did this in June, so it's fine. Reread a book. I reread P.S. I Still Love You, so yay! Completed! And that's it. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe or subscribe depending on where you're watching this. And let me know in the comments, have you read any of the books that I've mentioned? Did you like them? Or maybe you didn't? I'm Christina. I make videos every Tuesday. See you later. Bye! It's a never-ending summer. You might say it's fun, but it's summer the entire year. It's not fun. It's, it's not. It's just too hot. Here we only have two seasons. Hot and it's hell, please kill me. So yeah, let's start. <laughs>